the story itself. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving a khutbah. Jumu'ah. Khutbatul Jumu'ah. Sahaba are sitting and listening. Now we know the, the manners of Khutbatul Jumu'ah nowadays. Make sure your cell phone is on. Make sure it's full volume. Make sure you have a 50 cent ringtone. Right? Make sure to have, I don't know who calls you right during Salat. But make sure you find some friend who will call you right at that time. Okay? So we, we have certain adab of the khutbah nowadays that we have to follow. Alhamdulillah. Okay? So, uh, and we're pretty good at that, mashallah. And of course, there are the people who have so much taqwa that when they're standing in salat and praying and their phone goes off and it's an Indian song or whatever, they have so much taqwa that they cannot reach their hand in their pocket and turn it off. We have to listen to the entire thing. <laughs> you know, it's especially entertaining during Dhuhr and Asr, silent prayers, we get to enjoy it with full khushu. <laughs> <Right? laughs> it's awesome, it's the best, you know. So, we know the manners of the khutbah, or at least we're supposed to. We're supposed to know. And make sure you, you're the last one to get there. Make sure, make sure you get there in a time, maybe catch like the second ruku'ah so you can fulfill the accounting principle L-I LIFO, you know, last in, first out, you know. Also make, you sh make sure you park your car in a way that nobody else can get out. <laughs> just this. These are from the manners of the khutbah that you must follow. And all of you are mashallah familiar, we're, we're, we're good Muslims, so we know these things, okay. So anyway, the, the, the manners of khutbah were not yet revealed. It was not yet revealed that you have to stay there, you have to sit there, the khutbah is part of the salat, all of these things were not yet revealed. But the sahaba were still sitting there and attending the khutbah. Now, uh, this is interesting because you know, right now we are at this, this, this forum and this building and there's a convention going on. And you know, there are different kinds of conventions nowadays, like there's a computer convention, there's a car you know, uh, uh, what do you call those things? Expositions, car expo, computer expo, technology expo. I come from Texas, we have gun expos, <laughs> right? So <laughs> we really do, by the way, we have gun expo. It's pretty cool, you see a giant sign, gun expo, next exit. You speed your car up, <laughs> you don't want to go to the gun expo. But anyway, when usually a, one of these expositions comes by, and one of these expos happen, then a lot of people go there for business, right? They're going to go set up their trade booth. They're going to make other business contacts. They're going to make some deals. That's why they go. But a lot of people go for what? Just to hang out. Hey, there's a car expo. Let's go. I, I always wanted to sit in a Ferrari. Take a picture, take a picture. <laughs> right? Some people don't go for business. They go for what? The pictures. The hangout. You know, that's why they go. Now in Medina, in Medina, sometimes there would be expos, trade expos, they would come by, back in the day. And the Prophet ﷺ is giving his khutbah, the sahaba are sitting, and a trade expo is leaving. Now the people who are in business, it's very important to them to catch the trade expo, because if they miss it, it will not come back until two years from now, three years from now, and they will miss a lot of business. And in the khutbah, there are some business people sitting there. So they decide, I still have some time, Salat hasn't started yet. I should go make some deals quickly, because it's leaving. And I'll come right back. So they left the khutbah. They left the khutbah. Now, when they left, they left for business or pleasure? Business. business. But you know when people leave for business, and there's a, the expos are usually nice and colorful, and there's like an elephant or whatever. Back in the day, I'm saying. Nowadays, there's beautiful colors, flyers, lights, you know? And a lot of people around there. So it looks interesting. And even if you're not from that business, let me see what's going on over there. Hey, let's go check it out. So when you see a couple of business people get up and leave, and you're one of the useless people on the face of the earth, you're a college student. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Then you say to yourself, I got no business, but I mean, that looks pretty cool. Let's go check it out. We're right back. 
So some people go, people first get up and go for business. And some people go for entertainment. They go for entertainment. Now listen to the ayah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا When they sought business or entertainment, they ran towards it. They broke the group and went towards it. And they left you standing there. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا What was mentioned first? Business or entertainment? Business was mentioned first. Because the people who first got up did not get up for entertainment. They got up for what? Business. And they're thinking, I'm going to miss the opportunity. I want people to make the sale. So they got up and left. Okay. Now listen. قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Same ayah. قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ عَلَى الْعَكْسِ He reversed the sequence. He said, what Allah has is better than entertainment and business. وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ And Allah is the best provider. Allah changed the sequence in the same ayah. When he started in the beginning, he said, they saw business or entertainment. Later on, he said, what Allah has is better than entertainment and better than business. So the question arrives, how come Allah changes sequence in the Qur'an? How come He reverses things like that? I told you the explanation for why business was mentioned first in the beginning. What was it? Because the first people to get up, got up for business. And second people got, oh, it might, looks like fun, let's go. But then Allah is not talking about that expo. The next part of the ayah is the principle for Muslim life. The part about the expo is done. Now Allah is going to teach us a lesson about life altogether based on that experience. Now, based on that experience, you tell me now, in all honesty, is everybody into business? But is everybody into entertainment? <laughs> Not everybody is into business, but man, everybody in one way or another gets distracted by entertainment. So which is the more universal culprit? Oh, so when Allah talks about the culprits that will take you away from the remembrance of Allah, what did He mention first? This time, entertainment. He says, "Qul ma indallahi khairum min al-lahwi wa min al-tijara." Secondarily, from business also, "Wallahu khairul raziqin," and Allah is the best of all providers. Since I'm on the subject, I want to share a couple of other things about these beautiful ayat with you. You understand the sequence difference, right? Just a couple of other quick things. You know, I have a, 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 this thing about entertainment distracting. I used to have a job of chaplaincy. I used to be at a university and my part of my job was to make sure, just to help the Muslim students on campus and to maybe sometimes leave the, lead the khutbah, lead the Jumu'ah prayer. And there were like six or seven Muslim students in the entire campus. And I would go and sometimes go for Jumu'ah at the chapel and I'm, it's Salat time and nobody's there. Nobody's there. And I have to call these students in their dorm rooms. Uh, Kareem, uh, I'm, I'm at the chapel, it's Jumu'ah. Oh yeah? Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm really busy right now. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, Halo? <laughs> Bro, it's Jumu'ah. I know, I know, I know. I'll like, like before Asr, I'll be there. I told you college students, the most useful people on the planet. But anyway, so, <laughs> you know, so you have, you, people are taken away from the remembrance of Allah because of what? Entertainment. There are people, maybe in this audience, I mean, they're here by accident or their mother made them come, you know. But like, you know, you're sitting at home, you got your PS3, you got your Xbox 360, I don't know, you got your, I don't know what else you got, some other fitna device. And then you're sitting there, and you got yourself like Grand Theft Auto, or you got yourself like an Assassin's Creed, or you got yourself like, you know, Modern Warfare or something. And you close the doors and pull the curtains and you're like... <laughs> and, and then the sun comes up and the sun goes down, empires rise and fall, governments change. You're just in there, hum, hum, you know, you don't know what's going on, you know. There are people like that, they're distracted from life because of their, you know, I have to rank number five, I have to get to number five. <laughs> that, that'll mean something. Finally, your life will be worth something, okay? You know, 
if your screen name moves up a little on the rank, online rankings. But in, in any case, I want to talk to you about business. Really interesting. I had a student last year in my, in my program who was a very successful businessman. And he's been in business for maybe 15, 20 years. And subhanAllah, he has one of his biggest customers is a, uh, uh, a Jewish man from New York. And he calls him for 20 years, a loyal customer. He gives him the biggest orders. Every single Friday, right at khutbah starts at 1.15. 1.14, every single Friday, he calls him and gives him a big order. Every single Friday. And he has to say to him, uh, I can't talk. Oh, why? Oh, it's Friday, it's prayer time. Oh, I didn't realize. Next week, same thing. Next week, same thing for 20 years. <laughs> for 20 years. The thing I wanted to highlight to you, the word Allah used in this surah for business, did you hear it? What was the word? Anybody hear it? Tijara. Tijara. But you know what? Allah did not always use this word in the surah for business. Allah Azza wa says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha nudiya lissalati min yawmil jumu'ati, fas'au ila dhikrillah, wadharu tijara No. Wadharu al-bay'ah. He did not use the word tijara for business. He used the word bay'ah before. Bay'ah. Bay'ah actually does not mean business. Bay'ah means sale. Bay'ah means sale. How many people in business over here? How many people in business? Like two people in business? Astaghfirullah al what, what are you doing? What do you people do over here? Okay, anyway. Get into a business, sell bananas, do something. Do a business. Uh, anyway, but... So listen. When you're in a business, there are lots, there's lots of works. There's accounting. There is payroll. Oh, payroll hurts when you have to write the check. There's accounts payable. There's the electricity bills. There's the maintenance. There's security. There's scheduling, there's human resource management, there's hiring, and there's firing, and there's all these different things. You gotta keep track of everything when you're running a business, right? There's the stock, how much you gotta buy, how much is left, what was sold, what were the refunds, what came back, what are the goods, etc., etc. There's so many things to worry about in business, so many things. And one of the most painful things, of course, if you're like a business owner and you pay your employees on Thursday or Friday, like in, you know, in America, we don't have Friday off. So you're, if you're supposed to pay your employees on Friday, then you're a Muslim, you probably go to Jumu'ah early. You're supposed to write the check at the time, like, ah, maybe I should go remember Allah, because it hurts too much to sign those checks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you know what? If you're about to close your shop at Jumu'ah, you're about to close your shop, and a customer walks in. And the customer didn't, you know, some customers carry the little basket, but some customers have the big shopping cart. And the customer's putting in things in the cart, and he's piling them in, and piling them in, and his khutbah starts at 1.15, and it's 1.10. And they're like, okay, 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 he can, he can do it, he can do it. It's okay, it's okay. And he piles it in, and he piles it in, and he piles it in. And you're like, um, you know, if, you, if this was the time to write the checks, or to fill out the tax form, or to pay the electricity bill, you would shut it down, and you would go to Salat. But if a juicy customer walks in, and he's filling the cart. Is that easy to leave or hard to leave? Uh, so business is not always... It's, business may be easy to leave. You know what's hard to leave? Sale. Because the sale is what makes everything else worth it. All the pain you go through in business is for one thing and one thing only. Which is what? The sale. So when the sale comes, you're like, uh, just a little bit late. I'll catch this a lot. I'll catch the second rakah. Let me just finish this sales, it's a very important sales call. Let me finish this first. Allah says, leave the sales call. <laughs> but how am I going to make my money? Wallahu khayrul raziqeen. Allah will provide. That's not you. Allah tested you with that sales call. Allah tested you with that you know, juicy customer. And you say, I'm sorry sir, it's time for prayer. I have to go. We have to shut down. Can I, you sure I can't just buy? I have cash. Look at this cash. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, sir. We have to close the shop. It's prayer time. I, I, I apologize. We have to leave. And Allah will send you those. You know, He sent those to Bani Israel, that rizq. At the time that they were supposed to be doing ibadah, the fish would jump out of the water. They would jump high, wink at them, and then go back in the water. 
Right. <laughs>